kill more people than earthquakes or volcanoes. They're hurricanes. But why do hurricanes only strike in late summer and early fall? Well, the answer to this mystery begins with what's responsible for all this destruction. Would you believe the sun? It's not that the sun does anything on purpose. It just burns hydrogen and emits energy. The real problem is the shape of the Earth. It's round and it's tilted, which means that the middle of the Earth is closer to the sun than the other areas. But what it also means is that the Earth is unevenly heated. So what does that have to do with hurricanes? Well, to find out, we're going to have to go into the kitchen and make a hurricane. Now, the hurricane recipe requires two main ingredients, wind and water. Okay, I need you to imagine that this stovetop is part of an ocean. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but play along for a moment. Now, remember I told you that the Earth is not evenly heated. So suppose this element is an area of the ocean that receives more energy from the sun. And to show that it's absorbing sunlight and getting warmer, I'll turn the element on. Now I'm going to use this pot of liquid to represent the air sitting above the ocean. As the ocean warms up, so does the air sitting above it. And as the air gets warmer, it rises, carrying lots of water vapor along with it. As the warm air rises, cooler air rushes in to take its place. And this circular movement of air is called a convection current. Now this convection current is crucial, because when you get warm air rising and cooler air rushing in to take its place, you get... wind. And the stronger the convection current, the stronger the wind. But as the warm, moist air rises up into the higher altitudes, it starts to cool down. Now, cold air can't hold as much water vapor as warm air, so the vapor <sighs> condenses back into little droplets of water. And billions of these droplets form a cloud. principle you need to understand. It takes energy from the sun to heat the ocean and force some of the water to evaporate into the air. But when that water vapor cools and condenses back into a liquid at the higher altitudes, it has to give that energy back. And that's where the hurricane gets its power. This release of energy warms the surrounding air, which allows the next wave of rising air to travel a little higher before it condenses into a cloud. Before long, you have a giant cloud 10 to 12 kilometers high. And if you could look down on a hurricane, that's exactly what you'd see. A giant spinning cloud. But why is it spinning? The spin comes from the rotation of the Earth. If the Earth was standing still, air would move in a straight line. But because the Earth is spinning, the cold air rushing into the convection current gets bent, which causes the hurricane to spin. Now, if you put everything together, the wind, the water, the convection current, and the spin, here's what you get. A sink full of water? No, a giant vortex. Now, in the sink, you have water being pulled down the drain. A hurricane is just the opposite. It's a huge convection current sucking air up, with the rotation of the Earth causing it to spin. As it travels across the ocean, it picks up more water vapor and more energy. The vortex tightens and the winds become stronger. It's like a skater pulling in her arms as she goes into a spin. With wind speeds approaching 130 kilometers an hour, you now have a full-blown hurricane. Now, a hurricane out in the middle of the ocean is not a problem. But when it hits land, then we see how destructive this vortex can be. However, it's only the coastal regions that feel the full force of the hurricane. Because the moment a hurricane touches land, it starts to weaken. And the reason is simple. Once it hits land, it loses its energy source, the warm water of the ocean. It's just like taking a boiling pot of water off the stove. It slowly quiets down. 
Now, I still haven't told you why hurricanes are seasonal. Well, it all comes back to the fact that the Earth is tilted. Duh. That's better. You see, hurricanes only form in this narrow band on either side of the equator. That's because, in order to evaporate enough water to form a hurricane, the temperature of the ocean has to be at least 27 degrees Celsius, or about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the northern hemisphere, the most active time for hurricanes is late summer or early fall, after the oceans have had several months of intense sunlight to warm them up. And as the Earth tilts and causes the intense sunlight to drift south for the winter, the hurricane season ends in the northern hemisphere. But for the folks in the southern hemisphere, it's just starting.